Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is Christine and today I'm going to show you how to do the granny stripe which you can see here in the shawl that I've made. Um, this is the granny stripe that I've used in this dream color um, kind of midnight themed shawl. Uh, it's a rectangle shawl so it's one large long rectangle that wraps around your back. Uh, it's just made with a granny stripe going across that way and around the border we have a granny stripe as well with a single crochet edging so I'll zoom in so you can see how it looks so we've got granny stripe going this way and then granny stripe going this way with the single crochet border. So I'm going to show you how to do that today and then you can refer to the written pattern on my blog and I'll try to have a downloadable version uh, created as well. So for this pattern you're going to need a five millimeter hook, some scissors, a darning needle, and some category one super fine yarn. Uh, the yarn that I'm using and this shawl is inspired by dream color which is a hobby yarn uh, it's 100 gram balls and it calls for a three to four millimeter hook this is a hand washed um, wool it's very soft it's beautiful the color but you can use any actually you can use any uh, yarn you want what's important is that you um, do a few samples and see how your yarn uh, is coming out with your hook. You may want to go up a couple of hook sizes to get the drape uh, that you're looking for. So I've used a category one, so it takes of course more stitches. If you want to use a bigger or weight of yarn, like a category two, three, or four, um, you're going to have less stitches in your starting chain uh, because the yarn will be bigger and you won't have as many uh, granny clusters to do. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the stitch pattern. The stitch pattern for the granny stripe, uh, the repeat is a multiple of three stitches plus one. Uh, so for every three stitches you have, that's going to be one cluster. In the example of the shawl that I've made, I have 24 clusters. Um, so I have started with a chain of 72 plus one. Uh, here for this example, I'm going to just do a chain of 15 and then add one. So I'll have five clusters. Uh, we'll start with a slip knot. So if you don't know how to do a slip knot, this is the way I do it. I wrap the um, yarn around my finger twice. I pull the back yarn forward and then I pull the back yarn off. And that makes a slip knot. Okay, so we're going to chain. 15. I'm going to make a very small sample uh, size of the shawl for you guys. And this is the width of the shawl. Uh, the length of the shawl is going to de be determined by how many rows you do. So that's 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, so that's my multiple of three, uh, and then I'll add one more stitch, and you're going to go into the fourth chain from the hook with a double crochet, and we're making our first cluster, our first granny stripe cluster, and we're going to do a second double crochet into that same fourth stitch. So we have a cluster here on the end. We're going to skip two stitches and in the third stitch, we're going to, in the third chain, sorry, we're going to do three double crochets to make our second cluster. Okay, and we'll just keep doing that across. I'm going to skip two and then do three double crochets. So now I have three clusters. I'm going to skip two. Do 
two, three. Just making sure I'm in frame. Do three. And then when you skip these last two here, it should bring you to the very last stitch. Oops. <clears throat> and we're going to do again three double crochet. So your first row of granny stripe is going to start and end with a cluster. Okay, and this is what it looks like. We have five clusters because we started with 15 stitches. We added one for our first chain here on the end. So we have one, two, three, four, five clusters. Now, the way that the granny stripe pattern I use works is that you have a cluster on the end of one row and on the next row you have a bar. So it's a, a cluster and then a bar, a cluster and then a bar. And that bar makes a space. So it's similar to the repeat you have here. We have a cluster and a space, cluster and a space. So the way we achieve that is chain three after you complete your first row and turn. Now we're gonna skip this cluster and we're gonna do a cluster right in the space. So because of this, we have one less cluster on every other row. So I have a bar on the end, I have a cluster, and then I'm gonna go in between every cluster all the way across and do three double crochets. That's my third one. So I have three clusters in a bar and then my fourth cluster. And then at the very end here, you're just gonna find your top chain and you're gonna do a double crochet into the top chain. And that's your ending bar. And that is the repeat for the whole thing. Very easy. Um, so you have one row, one row, um, sorry, yeah, you have one row with five, and then you have one row with four and two bars on the end. And the way that you go to your next, um, row three is you're going to chain three. And sometimes I actually chain two because I find that it makes a straighter edge, but you can see how many you want to chain. But I chain, uh, you chain three, that's technically what you're supposed to do. And then in the space that you have here, you're going to make the first cluster of row, of, uh, row three. So let's do one and then two. And that starting chain three counts as your first double crochet. So you'll do two in the space plus your three on the chain. <clears throat> and then you just go all the way back across the same as you did on the other rows doing three double crochets in each space across. So we have, and this time we're going to end up again with five clusters. So we alternate. Five clusters, four clusters, five clusters, four clusters. And then when you get to the end, you've just got this space and you just do a cluster in the space. And it's really nice. You can actually just do this pattern without doing a border at all. I find that the, the edging that you'll have will be so nice that you may not even need to do one. See how nice that is? But because we're alternating between clusters and spaces, we're able to easily do a granny stripe border all the way around this as well, because we have this basically the same layout as we have this way. Okay, so you're just going to repeat this until your um, shawl 
uh, or your scarf or your cowl. You can use this for anything until it's the length that you want it to be. So I'm just going to crochet a rectangle here and then I'll come back and show you how to do the border. Okay, so uh, we're back with the rectangle has been made um, vertically like this to the length, length of your project. Um, and then the way that I kind of did the border was um, I would do two continuous rounds of granny stripe around. Then I would turn my work so that it would not um, start to curve up the edge. And I would do the third round on the opposite side. And then I would do um, a round of single crochet. As you can see though, the edges are very nice and neat. You could leave it without even making a border. But if you wanna do the granny stripe border, the way that I did, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain three. And this first row is actually part of the border. So, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go into the first so I'm starting with a bar. I'm doing it with a bar on this row. You could probably adapt it to doing it without the bar. Would do it starting it with a cluster as well. So here I've got the bar and I'm gonna continue doing clusters until I get to the other end. Okay, so we're going almost get there okay and for my corners for this first round I'm gonna do two double crochets two chain spaces and then two double crochets to make a corner I found I only needed two <clears throat> you may need three if you have a different kind of yarn and a hook um, and so I'm kind of gonna force a corner into this last stitch here so I'm gonna go in the top of this last stitch, I'm going to do two and then two, sorry, two double crochets, two chains, and then into that same stitch, two more double crochets. And I have made a corner right there at the end. So I'm going to turn and we're going to work up the side until we get to the bottom up here and then I'll show you how I kind of force a corner <laughs> into that cluster as well. So we'll just do um, our clusters all the way up and this is quite easy because you already have it set up just like a granny stripe on the edges just by doing that alternation of cluster bar, cluster bar, cluster bar. And what's nice about doing the border is that also if you have a color changing, self changing yarn like I do, um, it gives a contrast to the colors you've been working. Uh, so that's part of the reason I wanted to do the border. I wanted to see the contrast of the stripe going in the opposite direction and also the color change uh, difference. <clears throat> so we're almost down here to the bottom okay. if I had bars on either side it would probably be easier but you can adapt the pattern if you want to do that I just simply go into the very I, I don't actually go into that that loop there because it's too close to this space so what I do is I kind of force myself a corner into the very bottom of that stitch on the end so I kind of just like force myself in there <clears throat> to make uh, a space where there essentially is not one so I'm going to do um, two double crochets two chains and then two double crochets into kind of the bottom corner of that stitch and now I have a corner so I still want to count this as a cluster. So I'm going to just go into this space and do a cluster. Okay, and you can see how that looks. 
So we have the, the stripe going in the opposite direction now of what we had before with our border. Okay, so we'll just keep going along the bottom like this. until we get back to the opposite side where we have um, another cluster. So we're gonna have to invent that space again, just like we did before. Okay, so here again, I'm gonna look for like the very first stitch and just the very bottom of that first stitch, I'm gonna force my hook in between the the loops there and just make a corner. There's probably another way to do this, but this is just, you know, with crochet is fun because you can just do whatever, like you can force your own way. It's so free, like the rules are, you can make anything work really with crochet. So I've made, I'm making my corner. So I've done two, <clears throat> actually I did three. So I'm gonna take one out. Okay, so I did two and then I'm going to chain two and I'm going to do two more and I've made another corner. And again, continue with your clusters until you get back to that starting chain three. Uh, so like I said earlier, I'm doing this, uh, the first two rounds uh, actually, I'm not working um, on the other side. I'm going to do a continuous round. I'm going to continue around instead of joining because the way that I've done it, I started my, um, it, it dead ends here. So actually, I don't need to join and chain up. I'm just going to continue around and do another continuous round of granny stripe for a second border round. You'll see how that goes, I'm almost there. Okay, so we're at the end, we have this. So I'm just gonna go into it and at this point, I'm gonna switch from doing two to doing three in each corner. So I'm making a new corner, uh, kind of in a continuous round, and um, I'm gonna do three and two and three. So I'm making a new corner. Now when we get a back around, I am gonna end the round and flip it to the other side and I'll show you that. Um, so, but that is the first round and now I'm doing a continuous, get some more yarn. A continuous round. And you don't have to do a continuous round. I mean, you can adapt this quite easily to do it kind of any way you want to do it. It's so easy to adapt a granny square or a granny stripe to make almost any shapes you want. Um, but this is just the way that I found for the border that I like to do. So I'm gonna go all the way around another time, except uh, the only difference now is that when I get to my corners, um, I'm gonna do three double crochets instead of two double crochets. And that helps me get around that corner the second time So, so now we're at the corner, so I'm going to do three, actually I don't need to do three, I'm going to just do two actually, two and two more. So we'll do three on the next go round. Then. 
Okay, and then here. Go down. And you see how it's starting to turn in? Now, the reason that you can't do too many rows like this or rounds like this is because the work will kind of start to turn a little bit or on you. <clears throat> uh, and I found that if you just do one row on the opposite side, that it brings it back flat. Okay, so I'm going to continue around like this until I get back to the start and I'll meet you. Okay, back. so we're back and I went all the way around in continuous rounds. Uh, this was where we started our, um, this is like there's a bar under here, right? So that's where we started our border. Uh, and you can see how it looks. It's kind of a great technique to get um, a granny square in any shape you want really because you can make a rectangle you can make a big square or a small square uh, in these stripes and then you can do a border of granny square which gives you what you need to be able to join the squares which is this granny square all the way around so you can use this technique for other things uh, as well um, but what I'm going to show you now is since I have done like continuous rounds I kind of come to a dead end up here at the corner um, and you can see it kind of turns on me a little bit which I, because now I'm doing everything on the same side instead of flipping it backwards and forwards uh, and I also don't have those little stripes in there that are quite nice which I like uh, you can tell that this looks a little different when you do it on the same side it looks different than when you're flipping it backwards and like working on both sides so what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna just like get to the end I'm gonna come to the dead end and I'm gonna do three double crochets like it dead ends <laughs> we're not doing a corner now okay uh, and then my last border round that I, I've done on the shawl is I'm just going to chain three and flip to the other side And we're on this side and we're going to do in the other direction the same thing all the way around and then we'll join after so I'm going to work all the way around on the other side just exactly the same way I did uh, and to mention on these sides here I did do a uh, two 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 so for the corner I did two double crochets two um, chain spaces and then two but down here it looked like it needed three so I just did three so I mean look at your work and see what it needs on these corners I did three but on that one up there I just did two because that's what I needed okay so I'm gonna work now <clears throat> on the other side of where I was working before and I'm gonna go all the way around with one last um, round a on the opposite side and then I'll meet you back Okay, so we're back and I have done the border on the opposite side all the way up to the end here. So just on the very end, uh, all I'm going to do is three double crochets into that last space. Okay. And now I'm going to do one last round uh, and you can see how that like flattened it out and on the opposite side how nice it looks too because now we have that like stripe bar going through. So the last thing I'm going to do to finish this border is I'm going to chain one, turn it, and then I'm going to go all the way around and single crochet. And when I get to those edges, so we'll just do the first one together. And I'm just going in every single stitch. So I'm not going into the clusters anymore like I was before with the granny. Uh, now I'm going actually into the top of each stitch and doing a single crochet.
and when we get up here to the corner that's where the only difference will be <clears throat> excuse me I uh, will just get all the way up here to the corner and then we will do some uh, single crochets to turn the corner So we get to the last one, uh, and then to turn that corner, um, you might want to do two or three. Helps you to turn the corner. And we're going to have a corner like that for each one of these, except for that starting spot there, which really, it doesn't bother me too much. Uh, and you can see how it makes it nice and straight with the single crochets. So I'm just going to finish that and then I'll come back and show you the finished Okay, edging. so we're back. I've um, gone all the way around with single crochet and I'm just back here at the start. Um, at this very ending point, because we were doing the continuous rounds before, I don't have any um, top of the stitches to do. So I'm just going to go into the space for the last couple here. Uh, and then of course, I don't have any stitches here either, so no big problem. I'm just going to make some stitches uh, let's see I'm gonna go in there there's one and I'll go in there and make another one and that's fine with me so then I'll just slip stitch when I reach back up to the top that corner and I'm gonna take my scissors and cut this off okay uh, and then I have a very nice rectangle with a granny with uh, an edge here and actually this edge with a single crochet could easily be attached so these kind of shapes uh, can be very good for anything um, that you want to do it pretty much reversible on both sides and this is the pattern that I have made for my uh, wrap so I hope you enjoyed that uh, tutorial and um, if you like the content I'm making please subscribe to my channel leave me a comment and hit the like button um, and let me know what else you'd like to see maybe there's some uh, particular things that you're not able to find and uh, I would be happy to have your feedback thank you